Hey guys, today I have a chatty video. I want to share my opinion and I want to hear what you think about this. And in general, I just want to throw this conversation into the air as if it's needed to be thrown, but it's already <laughs> been thrown by other people. People talk like minimalism is dead, no more minimalism, minimalism is toxic, we should all go away from it. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about the fact, is minimalism dead or not? What's happening in general? Just share my opinion and I hope you find it useful. But first I'm gonna get some tea. First of all, somehow I'm actually happy that people are talking about the fact that minimalism can be a little bit toxic and it's not always the best solution for everyone. The first time I heard the, about the idea of minimalism, it was like maybe five, seven years ago. I still lived in Bali. I some a friend of mine, Natalia, recommended me the podcast The Minimalist. I started listening to it and I was like, oh my god, that's exactly what I need. I need to, you know, clean my space. Then I found a KonMari method for myself. It took me years to slowly, gradually minimize the amount of things I own, as well as understanding that some areas I, I don't need, I don't want to minimize. And and also to see how some areas were easy to minimize, like for example, like I, re I reduced the amount of skincare products, makeup, or like, I don't know, some like apparel that I don't really use. It just sits there and I felt the burden of it. And also make me understand that some areas, it's really hard for me not to start hoarding in those areas. And I have to have strict rules. For me, for instance, it's all uh, things related to crafting, stationery, because if I don't control myself, I'm gonna, I will be compulsively buying new planners, new notebooks, and some things for my craft projects, even if I'm not crafting right now. But the thing that I felt that sometimes when I talked about minimalism here or like on my other channel, Russian channel, I felt like people, some people are criticizing me and it's not only about me. I know it happened to other creators as well. They say like, how you can be minimalist? Like one person literally told me like, you're talking about minimalism and you have a cup that has a matching saucer. Yes, I have this vintage cup with the matching saucers. Only if you own like two pair of, uh, I don't know, underwear, you can be minimalist. And basically people were ashamed and embarrassed to call themselves a minimalist if they don't limit themselves to owning only 30 items. I still believe I am a minimalist, although somebody might say I'm not, but I'm trying to do it in a healthy way. That's why when I made my video about uh, Project 333, how it failed me, that I feel like this project is more limiting than empowering for me personally. At the same time, there are things that I only own one of, and most people would probably own more than one of. That's why I like this conversation about minimalism, about redefining and, uh, the minimalism, about people who actually try to minimize everything and three years later they realize it's actually more toxic than actually owning things. So I like that this process is happening. One thing I don't, I don't like that people treat minimalism as a trend. And I almost have a feeling that those people who minimized the most, the ones who were proud owners of one or three or four items and living in the empty apartments are actually the ones who are now saying that minimalism is dead. I don't know, like when I think of my example, I know for sure that minimalism did change my life. I'm never going to be the same as before I learned about minimalism. I'm still am a minimalist even after almost like, you know, seven years. But maybe this is because I didn't try to own one thing. I never minimized to the extent when I lived in an ap apartment that has empty walls, empty shelves, empty everything. I always kept my life in general the way how it is, just with slightly less items. That's why, to be honest, I almost feel like those people who are blaming others for not doing enough for minimalism are the ones who are quitting now. That's why also here I want to talk about the psychological side of trying minimalism and then one year later saying like, oh, it doesn't exist, it's, it's minimalism is dead. We have uh, two polarities, yeah? One is minimalism, when people strive to have as least things as possible and at some point it becomes almost like a goal itself to constantly minimizing, you know? It's not that when you minimize certain areas and you realize, okay, that's enough and you still allow yourself to buy new things, but when it becomes like unhealthy, when you keep minimizing, it's almost like, you know, unhealthy relationship with your weight when, uh, when it's like no matter how much uh, weight you lose, you still feel like, oh, I need to keep losing it unhealthy eating habits. The same, it can be unhealthy uh, 
unhealthy, you know, minimalism habits. But people, uh, you know, the first wave of minimalists, they were thinking like, okay, minimalism, it's like, no matter how you do it, it's something super healthy. And on the other polarity, we have such things as hoarding, you know. So people who are minimalism, they're like these uh, heroes of the world. And people who are hoarders, they're like, I don't know, nasty, sick, unhealthy people who need to go and declutter as soon as possible. But the reality is that the other uh, side of hoarding is actually not a healthy minimalism. The other uh, side of um, hoarding is a compulsive Spartanism. That's a term from psychology. I would even say obsessive compulsive. So the need to constantly minimize things is not always a good thing. You know, it's, it's actually uh, one of the signs of obsessive compulsive disorder, which is a mental disorder so the need of constant decluttering they need to count how many things I have the frustration that we feel when we put a goal like oh I should only own 30 items of clothes but then I I'm buying the 31st one am I allowed to do so that part of compulsive uh, decluttering is actually unhealthy I mean, it's hard, it's hard to draw a line. I don't know how about you, but every time I declutter or I, in general, discard things, especially when I understand I, I truly don't need them and I discard them. I mean, discard means donate, recycle, you know, resell and stuff like that. I feel a satisfaction. So it's hard, it's hard to draw a line uh, at what point it becomes almost like unhealthy obsession to seek this satisfaction. So we keep decluttering, not because we truly don't need those things, but we seek this uh, unhealthy satisfaction. I don't know if you understand what I mean. So basically, we get addicted to the process of decluttering. Uh, we don't consider anymore decluttering as a goal. We more think of decluttering as a way to, I don't know, gain some good mood. We used to go shopping to get good mood. Now we declutter to get good mood. You know what I mean? At the same time, I think there is a proven thing that the less things you own before it gets into the unhealthy, <laughs> you know, amount you actually feel like you're regaining control of life because the mental clutter means a lot to us. Let's say if my house is cluttered, at some point I'm going to feel that I'm overwhelmed by things and that I don't have control in my life. So when we start decluttering, it kind of gives us uh, the sense of control. But again, there is a line that we cross when it stops uh, serving this purpose and start serving like just uh, unhealthy addiction. Also, I want to come back to obsessive compulsive disorder. The reason why people now feel like, oh, I started minimalism and now I feel it's a toxic thing to do because they actually started going into this uh, obsessive com compulsive. Basically, when they feel uncomfortable, if they feel like th there are too many things and it can be irrational, you know, it doesn't mean that they really have too many things. They, they just constantly have a need to declutter. You know, it's like if somebody has OCD in terms of hygiene, they will be constantly washing their hands 20 times a day, which doesn't make any sense. You know, you do need to wash your hands, but definitely not 20 times a day, even in the time of pandemic. I think I will be crucified in the comment for this saying, but I still gonna keep it in the editing. Maybe I think so. Just a little note here. I'm not trying to say anything bad about people who have uh, compulsive disorders and they have certain behaviors that lead them to doing certain things in obsessive manners. I'm just trying to make a point that there is no problem with minimalism on its own, but there is a problem when we try to obsess with it and we try to do minimalism in a very extreme, in a, in a very unrealistic, in a very strict way. I would say so. When you have obsessive compulsive disorder, one of the signs that you have a constant anxiety about not doing something. That's why for me, like uh, when minimalism serves certain goals in your life, you know, it helps you to regain control of your life. It helps you to declutter your space so you have, I don't know, more space for things you truly love. For example, I have this problem, like most of my life, especially when I was a child, I used to buy things that based on how they will be perceived for others. For example, my mom doesn't like how I'm dressed. That's why sometimes I would buy things that I would think she would approve and she would love me for instead of buying things that I personally like. The same when I started working in the in a corporate office, I would buy things that would uh, make me perceived as an expert, as a more mature, because, you know, for most people, I look like a child. I'm 40 years old and I still look like a child. So, you know, most of my life I had to buy uh, certain things 
for other people and not myself. So when I did my first decluttering, I just realized I have so many things that don't bring me no freaking joy, but I buy them for sake to please other people, you know, to please men so I can finally find a boyfriend, which was a big problem for me back then when I was in my 30s, or to make people uh, take me more seriously or uh, make my parents finally, you know, like say, it's tell to me that they like they love me and they like my choice which still never happened no matter what i wear anyways yeah so when i decluttered i not only regained control of my life i also regained control of uh finally letting me being myself you know when i threw away all the stuff that doesn't bring me joy i replaced with things that actually are me you know that they are letting people see who i am for real and not see some like mask that i'm putting on to please other people as well it's important to say that when people start decluttering getting rid of things that they don't really like or don't really use or they those things don't really represent them they start asking themselves who am i what i am what i like and they start buying those things And when you buy things that truly represent what you are, you probably need less things. Because the reason we overbuy, overspend, overconsume, because we are looking for that perfect thing, but without knowing who we are and what we need, we're just going to buy everything. Making this change and minimizing something gave me joy and actually gave me more freedom. I started feeling more relaxed and stuff like that. So that's when minimalism is healthy that's why i still believe people should be minimalists but when it goes unhealthy when you still feel anxiety you did all these things but you understand you still feel anxious and i was thinking like oh my god i'm like betraying my principles i'm not a true minimalist but then i realized you know what i'm not the person who can wear capsule wardrobe i like to wear quirky funky things but i can't wear the same quirky things every day for the whole month because it just it's just not me. I need self-expression with how I dress, what I wear, and stuff like that. And that's when I felt that anxiety, that minimalism in, in uh, clothing uh, actually limits me from expressing myself. I said, no, I don't want to be minimalist in clothes. I want to be conscious what I buy. I want to buy things that I really love and going to last me long. But at the same time, I'm not going to limit myself. The problem is I like uh, buying new things. And instead of limiting myself to buying new things, It's better for me to find a sustainable way. For example, what I decided for a year 2022, buy things thrifted or I'm going to make my own clothes. So I'm not limiting myself of having more clothes. I just experiment with new ways to obtain them. You know what I mean? Let's talk also about uh, those kind of pure uh, minimalists who were shaming other people. Oh, you're not really a minimalist because you own this and that. We have to understand that not everyone can be a minimalist. The reason why people tried minimalism but went back and the reason why we can or cannot follow a, like a strict minimalistic diet is, for example, if I don't care what to wear and it's actually easier for me to wear like the same t-shirt and the same pants every year because it just makes my choice easier. Or let's say I'm a neurodivergent person who prefers to wear same things every day because that's from where my comfort comes from. Of course, it's easy for me to be minimalist who will be claiming like oh everyone can just wear the same t-shirt for the year but it's not how it's true for everyone for some people it's just it's going to be a nightmare wearing the same t-shirt every day so when we go into extreme minimalism we have to first understand who we truly are and what's important for us if we neglect that and we just follow some other trend of course that's how we're going to be hurt and how we're going to regret doing what we are and I would say in the last couple of years, the YouTube <laughs> almost created this cult of throwing things away. I mean, maybe in a sustainable way, donating and stuff like this, but let's not fool ourselves. The fact that you bring in your clothes to the donation box doesn't mean this stuff going to be actually distributed to the right people. Most of this stuff, there is a huge percentage of things that go from donation box exactly to the landfill. So we fool ourselves, like we are decluttering. These things find a second life, but they don't necessarily do so. This video, let me share with you uh, my few principles that I apply to my own life, where I try to see, is it healthy for me to own this amount of stuff or is it going into obsessive hoarders? This is what happening with yarn and knitting <laughs> with me at the moment. I'm buying more yarn that I can potentially knit in one month and 
let's talk about these principles and also how do I understand when my attempt to be minimalistic or to be eco-friendly goes into the toxic and healthy you know area so the principle number one to actually try to see where do you feel anxious for example I realized I feel anxious when people give me gifts because I'm thinking like oh crap look, now I'm gonna have this extra thing and I'll have to take care of it oh my god they're breaking my minimalism habits so if I feel anxiety to the level when I, I start hating people who give me gifts or people who give me like free stuff that I can't refuse that's when it's unhealthy that's when I know my minimalism is already beyond <laughs> normalcy second if I keep a constant inventory of what I own and how many things I own if I constantly think like oh I only own 30 uh, items like in terms of closing items and if I'm afraid to break this number if it's really important for me if it's 30 or 35 if if that is the goal for me to keep this number and I get super anxious when this number goes up even a little bit then when it's unhealthy it's the same with weight if I really obsessed or oh, am I 120 or 125 pounds or 130 pounds this is really obsessive third when i keep thinking about it all the time if i constantly uh, judge myself i constantly like you know kind of analyzing oh am i minimalistic enough what should i minimize next is it too much clothes or i own or is it okay oh i, I call myself a minimalist but i own 10 pounds of yarn is it minimalistic enough so if if this is a constant conversation in my head then it's unhealthy and the last but not least do i feel guilty about the things i own if this guilt goes beyond anything if it's like really strong uh, guilt if i feel bad about myself and i'm constantly like bashing myself like oh you're such a pig you you bought another thing while you're already owning so much then it's unhealthy so what do i do if i see this science I tell myself that okay minimalism or eco minimalism is not healthy for me and I'm not gonna obsess about that if I want to control the amount of things I own I, I can create certain rules for myself for example like in the summer I uh, you know I started this experiment three uh, months uh, no buy challenge and I will actually make a video about that a little bit later and I told myself I can only buy new yarn if this yarn will go directly in the current project so let's say like I was knitting a sweater and I ran out of yarn so i bought more yarn to finish it that makes sense or for example i went to this knitting course and i was required to knit something like a hat but i didn't have a proper yarn for it okay then it was okay to order yarn so i can start this project and you know complete my course so if it goes into something that i'm doing right now i buy it if not then i will have to wait for a couple of months and another example if i feel i'm too anxious about like oh uh, about amount of things for example i really wanted to buy this particular uh, pair of jeans but i was thinking like jeans are not super eco-friendly also i already own a pair of black jeans am i allowed to uh, own another pair of black jeans i was thinking about it for two months like every day i would think of this particular pair of jeans but not allow myself to buy it and what i did in there i just went and bought it and the reason i did it because i felt i have so much anxiety in this area so i have so much fear of what i'm gonna become if i <laughs> buy a second pair of black jeans it was like it was obsessive so i was like i actually have to do something against my obsession you know the way to cure this obsession to actually do things that scary for example like if i'm washing my hands 20 times a day i have to reduce the amount of washes even i gonna fear the reducing you know so the same in this i just went and bought this freaking jeans and to be honest i'm so happy about that and nothing bad happened the world didn't collapse and this was about the unhealthy minimalism but let's talk about hoarding you know how i allow myself certain categories where i don't need to minimize first of all it's about habits and expression for example with the closing items i realized that i have different styles sometimes i, I want to uh, you know to be super sporty like looking like a surfer girl sometimes i want to be a girly girl something from the cottage core or sometimes i want to look like a girl next door when i wear my flannel shorts sometimes i want to have something funky ridiculous colors so i will not minimize in terms of my clothes but i make sure that the clothes i buy i just wear them and as soon as i buy them thrifted or like sustainable 
possible most of the time not all the time most of the time that's okay also i realized that some decluttering rules don't work for example if the rule says like oh if you didn't wear it for a year declutter it but at the same time you have to notice what are your habits i noticed uh, that the way how i treat clothes in my wardrobe it's like in cycles for example this particular thing i was wearing it several times a week in 2019 and 2018 but then in 2020 i didn't want to wear it at all i didn't wear this thing even a single time in 2020 should i throw it away no because this is a perfect fit i really like it it fits my standards i just kept it in the closet for a year without wearing it but now i'm back in it again and i noticed a lot that uh, there are things that i keep in the closet somewhere far away and then like two three years later i can just start wearing them again on a regular basis so you have to understand what are your cycles so maybe it's not a bad thing to keep something my plan for now for example is uh, to review my closet look at the things that i don't want to wear anymore i have like maybe five or ten items that i didn't wear in 2020 i didn't wear them in 2021 technically i should declutter but i don't want to let them go, them go because i have sentimental value to these items i'm gonna put them in a separate box just let them be there maybe i will want to wear because sometimes when you don't see something for a long time in your wardrobe that you want to wear it you feel like oh it's like almost like buying something new so who knows and maybe it will help me to keep the variety in my closet and i don't need to get rid and keep 30 items on my clothing rack like what are my principles towards hoarding for example me personally i have this uh I used to have this fear i don't have it that much anymore like i would look at something i was like ah, i should keep it because maybe i will need it one day but most of the time i won't and now i am actually training myself to get rid of things if i only keep them for fear of oh maybe i will need it one day you also have to understand the uh, psychological reasons why we have this fear i grew up in ussr people who grew up in countries where the economy is unstable or people who grew up in ussr like me when i grew up things were scarce like you didn't have a choice like oh you you can choose between these 10,000 types of skirts no there was only one skirt and to buy it your mom had to first of all wait for the store to start selling it and second wait in line for three hours so for us it's hard to throw away because you think like i throw this thing away and then i will never have access to it people who grow up poor and then they became wealthy they will almost all the time they will be impulsive buyers they would want to buy and own more things because if you didn't own things when you were young you will want to buy this for yourself almost like treating your inner child from that time which you have to respect you have to understand that this is part of your inner self it's part of your upbringing the other thing is like when you realize this about you and you feel like you have energy and you have like i don't know inner resources to fight it so for me now acknowledging that that's the reason why i keep things and i tell myself like you are allowed to let it go you you will be able to buy a new one and that's what i i do but i still respect the reasons why i am the way i am i am you know and the only thing that i really fight within myself and again it's not something that every should everyone should fight it just depends on you i fight impulsive buying the reason i fight impulsive buying my brain has adhd tendencies so the way how i perceive things might be different from other people for example i read an article and i come across some information and i feel like oh that's exactly what i need right now the way how my brain is wired i truly believe in this moment that i need this thing that's the number one priority for me right now that i can pay any money for it that i can't live without this thing and there is no way in that particular moment i can look rationally and tell myself not to buy it because i feel i don't know i feel a crazy need of buying this thing but what i do right now i delay you know i have a wish list so every time i think like oh i need to buy this particular like thing i put it in the wish list and i come back to this wish, uh, wish list and by the end of the month or after a certain period of time and i look at this thing and if i still feel like buying it then i buy it if i look at it and i'm like what on earth make me want it you know like i don't feel like i need it anymore then i know that i don't need to buy it so this helps me not to buy too much it helps me to stay me minimalistic but at the same time i don't have a strict uh, limiting diet you know like i don't have it's like almost like a food diet i don't have a food diet you're not buying anything you're just helping yourself not to buy things in the moment when they seem like something you need to buy right now because after a week 
even like after a couple of days, I will be more rational. Ah, actually, I don't need it. Or I found something else that replaces this particular need. So that's my approach to healthy buying, healthy minimalism, and healthy hoarding. I hope this video was useful for you. I know it was a little bit like a <laughs> brain dump. This is another thing I'm actually trying to do on this channel. I am trying to add some videos that will be more like my thought process because maybe it will be interesting for somebody and maybe it will help you to have a conversation with me, not only like this high produced videos where I do some research and then it's 15 minutes of me talking about why Amazon sucks. Those videos will be still here on this channel, but I want to incorporate other videos as well. So it will help me to create more videos per month, not one video in three months. You know what I mean. I hope you missed me on this channel. I'm trying to kind of get back <laughs> with my regular production, which is kind of hard for me, but being regular is not exactly my thing. But anyway, I hope this video was useful for you. If you want to share your opinion, please do so. I really want to hear what people think about it and see you in my next video. And, and how, I don't know when it's going to be. <laughs> I like how Halis says, she says, see you when I see you. So I guess I'll have something, <laughs> have to invent something similar to this phrase. Bye.